there. Today's video is kind of a catch up, a round up. Um, I've got some makes to share that weren't in my plans and these are things I've been making over the last couple of months, I think since, yeah, May. So there's some mending projects, there's some pattern tests and Minerva makes. Yeah, and I thought I would bundle them all together into a video and kind of, yeah, share them with you. I'm going to be really honest in this video. Not all of these are great. <laughs> um, yeah, there's some twalls, there's some just like flops, some things that did not turn out the way that I had hoped, but I think that is really fun to talk about, so stay tuned. So back in April, uh, Minerva sent me this really lovely stonewashed linen. Uh, they sent it to me to make something and then write a blog post about it, uh, which you can read below. I'll pop the link in. And yeah, I love this fabric so much. I actually had a sample of it from them last summer, so it was kind of on my radar. It's a really heavy weight, really nicely textured, 100% uh, linen. So I have to say I've never worked with a fabric like this before. It's super, super heavy, like definitely could be like upholstery weight heavy, but then it's also really drapey and it has this like nice texture. I went with the teal colorway, but they have like a whole pretty like wide range of other colors. And initially I was going to make a jumpsuit, but I got concerned that like the texture, that I wouldn't like that on my skin. Now that I'm like wearing it as a dress, it totally would have been fine. And I definitely think this fabric is like more suited to a jumpsuit or overalls or a jacket. Um, again, because of the weight, it would be really great for like a drapey jacket, I think would be really cool. I've actually picked up some more, but not from Minerva. I found some here in the EU um, from Dresa Stoffen. They still have a few colorways left and it's like half the price. So if you're over here, I would recommend checking it out. Um, yeah, I got some dark blue to make a little like summer overalls set for working in my garden. But yeah, so that's about the fabric. I love it so much. I even bought some more. Um, I'll stop rambling about it now. Um, and this is the Helen's Closet Reynolds dress. So this is my second Reynolds and I will definitely be making another one. I really, really love this pattern. I love how quickly and easily everything comes together for the most part. I did have some issues with this one in the high bust area. It turned out like really, really gapy. It like felt like <laughs> I had wings here. It was so much. Uh, yeah, I think I ended up taking about like eight to 10 centimeters total. Like I just ended up doing a wedge, but it was kind of annoying to like unpick all the top stitching, all the under stitching, um, and this fabric does fray quite a bit. So I was having a bit of a hard time getting that out of here, but it is now transferred to my pattern piece and I won't have to deal with that next time. So that's really great. Having patterns be like too big in the high bust is a problem that I have pretty often. So initially I figured that it was just me, but I ended up talking to several other sewists who had been making this pattern before and across lots of different sizes, bust cups, and they all have the same issue. So bear that in mind if you are wanting to make a Reynolds dress. I think it's worth it to just like take that little bit out because I really love the fit I have achieved here. And yeah, I've been wearing it all the time. I think it's really great. The other thing I did was to bring up the straps pretty significantly because it did like dip down below and like a lot of my bra was showing. Sometimes I don't mind, but for this one I wanted to bring that up, which of course brought up the darts as well. I don't really feel like I lose out on the shaping. 
Um, I wear a belt with it anyway, so I'm fine with that, but again, something to bear in mind, you might want to build up the arm side instead of just taking the strap in, if that is something that you're going to do. But I'm really happy with it. I love doing the mitered corners. I think that is such a fun thing to sew. And yeah, I really love the length. I want to do another like knee length version, probably in a viscose, but for now I really love this maxi length Reynolds dress. The next thing that I made in May was for a pattern test. So this has since been released and I can talk about it now. Uh, this is the Kinfolk dress from Jennifer Lauren Handmade. I love this dress so much. I definitely want like five more in my wardrobe. It is the perfect just like throw on and go dress. Um, so I made this from a viscose linen kind of beachy stripe situation that I've had in my stash for well, I think like three years, a really long time. I think it is super cute. So it's a grown on sleeve and usually grown on sleeves like do not work for me. I like this one. I have a great range of motion, which has literally never happened before. I was actually really skeptical to even like try the pattern. Um, because yeah, usually like grown on sleeves just don't feel good for me. And this one feels so great. It's so perfect. They're princess seams that go into this really cool, um, yeah, I don't even know what you would call this. It's like a, a waist piece that then connects to a tie. So it's a really like free flowing, loosey goosey dress. So you can see without the tie, it is like it hangs a lot. There's a lot of movement, which is great in the summertime. And then it can just like tie it back here or even tie it across the front to cinch the waist in. Um, the skirt is like a midi length and has uh, panels as well. So it's princess seamed like through the bodice and then has this nice gourd A-line skirt, which again, like just super like breezy and floaty. And I feel like the stripes here like also make it very, I don't know, like beachy and nautical. I wore it a whole bunch on vacation this last week and yeah, I love it. My only thing about it is that the pockets are small. I would definitely like make those bigger next time. Um, and then I need to do a little work on the shoulder because it's coming like, like my shoulder is here. So it's about an inch too far forward, which is like the opposite issue that I usually get. So something to bear in mind that this here is like a little bit shorter than most indie patterns, which I've experienced on other Jennifer Lauren patterns as well. So I guess they're just like built in forward shoulder adjustment perhaps, or maybe they're just made for um, a bit more petite through here, which is normally great, but it's a little too far for me this time. But I am so happy with it. Again, I wear it all the time, like at least once a week, because yeah, it just like pop on and go. It's adjustable. So that is really great for me with my like ever fluctuating size. Yeah, total winner. I can't wait to make more. So I said I would be really honest in this video and honestly, I really hate both of these items. <laughs> uh, this is a skirt and top little set that I thought would be cute together and I was wrong. I don't like it at all. Um, yeah, both pieces are on paper, they should be cute. <laughs> um, or well, not that they should be cute. I thought I would like them, and I don't. And that just happens sometimes. So, lessons learned. I really only like a print if it's in a dress. I think that's my big takeaway <laughs> here. Now, I was never like over the moon with this fabric. I bought it specifically like to have a twalling 
fabric on hand that is a viscose that would mimic like the other viscoses in my stash that I really love and didn't want to like take a chance on. So in that sense, I kind of knew ahead of time that this wasn't going to be like my favorite item or items. There's two. But yeah, <laughs> it still ended up being a lot worse than I expected. I put this on and I'm like, am I wearing a costume? Like it feels really far away from like a sense of myself and where I'm wanting to go with my style. So it's not the fault of either of the patterns. It just like was a big miss. I think both of these pieces with a few like tweaks in a different fabric could be really nice. Um, but yeah. I should say this is the Tia blouse from Michelle Sews. It's a really like pretty basic blouse pattern. I, by, by the time I made this, I made the skirt first. By the time I made the top, I was like kind of so done <laughs> with it that I didn't stop to make the fitting adjustments that I probably should have. Namely the shoulder, like it's a good, inch and a half off of where it should be um, and would be like it would look a lot better if it was if I narrowed the shoulder also the dart is like almost below my boob <laughs> so that's a little bit silly but I mean it's a basic blouse top and with those like quick little adjustments I think it would be something that I would wear a lot especially if it were in a solid um, I would also need to address like the back because despite it being a pretty like loose flowy top I don't have the best range of motion so I would need to figure that out but yeah it's a nice blouse the skirt is the chalk and notch Evelyn skirt and I went with the view C I think it's the one with the elasticated back and the nice like front waistband or like the flat waistband in the front. I think it's really great. It was a really fun pattern to sew. I really love, let's see if I can show you like without flashing you, the construction of the facing for the thigh slit is really fun. I really enjoyed that. The shape, I'm really like not sure about if it's something that I like or not. Um, it is very straight down. It feels a little bit prim, like kind of more pencil skirt-ish, which I don't usually go for. I usually like more of an A-line. Yeah, again, like I love the slit and I love the length, but I might need more like, I might wanna redraw some of the edges. I don't know if I'm really like up for that or not, or if I just wanna find a different skirt pattern. So as far as like a 12 fabric, it, these are good 12 pieces. I did learn things from making them, um, but as far as them being wearable, it's not. Like I said, it feels like I'm wearing a costume, I'm wearing somebody else's clothes, and yeah, that's not what I'm after. This is another make that I feel kind of fits in that flop category. So, I was gifted this French Terry, again, by Minerva, and when it arrived, it wasn't what I had expected. Um, it didn't have as much stretch as what I needed for the initial pattern I was thinking about. I was going to make, like, a little wrap cardigan, and I expected it to have more, like, 20 to 30 percent stretch, and it really only has, like, 15% and so I wasn't really sure what to do with it and I kind of floundered quite a bit to find the right pattern to pair with it and I don't think I hit the mark. Um, I went with the forget-me-not clementine dress um, partially just like because it's good for me to have like <laughs> forget-me-not patterns made up in my closet so I can build content around that. So that was definitely a like 
deciding factor. Uh, and it was for knits with 15% stretch or more. And I think it's like, it doesn't feel like enough for me. I had to make some pretty, yeah, I had to do quite a bit of alterations to get it to fit me, like because of the lack of stretch. And I still don't have like the best range of motion. Again, my trouble seems to always be like in the sleeve area. I did narrow the shoulder and bring this in a little bit, which helped so, so much. But again, like, I don't think it's one I'm going to reach for very often because of that. Um, also, the bust point is too high, which is not something I can like go back and fix. Something I can know for next time because I do really like the pattern. And I think in like a jersey knit, it would be really great. I definitely think I want a clementine cowl neck top uh, for like the fall winter. It would be really great. I do love like the princess seams. I think it's very cute. But again, this is just a pattern fabric not match. <laughs> That's not a graceful way of saying it. It's just, yeah. I don't, I don't love it. I also think the like color and shape combination is a little bit more on the like feminine side for me that I'm just like, again, kind of feel like I'm wearing somebody else's clothes. I do love this color. I think it is, it's kind of like a dusty rose, but again, in this cut with like the skater type skirt, I don't know, it's just not, not quite it for me. Um, I did make some changes just to, for transparency sake, for one, I made the pockets a very nice size. They are like the perfect pockets. <laughs> um, but to anchor them, I didn't want them like flapping around, so I added a waist seam, which was really easy to do uh, on the pattern pieces. I just like snipped them where they would be, uh, where the waistline is marked because it is, they're like, the pieces are nested to be either the top or uh, the skirt. So that was really easy to do. Um, I don't think it looks great, to be honest. Um, and I usually like wear a belt to <laughs> cover up this seam because it just like, it doesn't want to lay flat, which is probably more of a pattern issue or like a fabric issue. Yeah, it doesn't want to lay flat. It doesn't want to lay flat like here across the chest either. So it's kind of annoying. Again, it's a French terry, which I usually like, but I don't know. Meh. Meh. So both of these pieces ended up being different than I expected. In a good way and in, like, not a good way. So I'll start with the top. Um, this is the Sylvie top from Forget Me Not. It is our newest, our, it's Joe's newest release. <laughs> um, I just helped with like the marketing stuff. And so for part of that, uh, for getting the launch ready, I made some samples to do a sew along. And so I made both versions. The other view has like these cute flutter sleeves and this really pretty drapey cowl neck. And I was definitely like much more drawn to those design elements initially. And I don't think I would have on my own like chosen to make this view, but I am so glad I did because I love it so much more than I thought I would. It is like, it kind of gives me like butch muscle tee vibes, which I am loving at the moment. Um, but then it also has this like cute little V-shaped seam here, which kind of brings it back to like being a little more feminine. Yeah, the construction is really fun. It is unlike anything that I have made before. So like, for example, this, the shoulder piece is just, is hemmed, even though it's a knit, but then it connects here to this like band where you stretch it in uh, to go around the curve, which works really well. I feel like that's a really clever, yeah, way of doing things. I made it in a bamboo cotton mix that is, yeah, 
talk about it all the time. It's my favorite fabric. I got it from Textilestad, and this is the colorway Raff Blue. So it's kind of like a steel blue color, and the other one that I chose was like a light like periwinkle blue. And again, I thought I would like that one more, but and I just, I love this one. I love it so much. So I know I'll be wearing this all the time. It is really cute, like casual, just with shorts. It looks really good with my skirts, and I think it'll be a really great layering piece when the weather gets cooler. So yeah, that's the Sylvie top. And then these shorts, my expectation was that they would be super quick to make, and they were not. <laughs> um, so what I thought would be like a two hour project ended up being like a two day project. Um, I cut these out last year. I cut out two versions of just like the shorts from the Untitled Thoughts olive jumpsuit. And I made one up last year. Love it. No problems at all. I wear them all the time. And I just didn't get around to constructing these ones. I had like finished all the edges even, so I thought it would be just like a really quick put them together, slap in the elastic, good to go. Uh, but I had to like make a lot of changes. So for one, they were like very long and it looked super frumpy. And then I had just drafted, I got this fabric. I'm just gonna back up for a minute. I got this fabric from a friend, it was like one of her remnants. So I think there was only 90 centimeters here, which means there's no pockets. I had to really like Tetris my way <laughs> to get these shorts out of it. And with that, I decided to just do a facing instead of a full waistband, which is what I had done on the other pair of shorts as well. But I guess that linen like had more give than this one. Yeah, that one was like, like one of those like thin, lightweight, very washed linen, and then this one is much more sturdy. So I guess it like didn't have the same amount of give, so the rise was super short. I had already like inserted and top stitched the elastic, um, and again like the legs were really long. So what I ended up doing is I had to take all the top stitching off, all the under stitching, and then I what I trimmed off of the leg piece, I ended up using like patching it together to make an inner waistband. And so now that added like what I needed for the rise. And I think they're cute. They're definitely functional. I only had one other pair of shorts in my wardrobe, so I definitely needed these. Um, when I went on vacation last week, it's also like going to be really hot this week here. So definitely glad that I have a pair of shorts, but it's always a struggle when like, I think something is going to be really easy and then one thing goes wrong and I'm like, get really mad about it. And then I like, I lose more time, like, because I'm annoyed that it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> And that is exactly what happened with these shorts. What should have been like a two hour project took me like two days. But now I have a pair of shorts that I didn't have before, so worth it. So back in May, I did a whole like clear out of all of my dresses and kind of assessed them if they either needed to go or if they needed some like attention. And this Heidi dress was definitely one that needed some TLC, needed some alterations, and I am really glad that I finally got around to doing that this week. So I made this dress back in 2020, I think, and I didn't wear it all last year because I had popped the some of the stitches and like it was coming, the strap was coming apart because I didn't interface in. I don't know why I skipped that step. Don't do that. <laughs> um, very silly, especially for somewhere like a strap that is going to take a lot of like pressure and wear. 
And I've been putting off like making new straps because I had like even pattern matched them, which I was really proud of at the time. And so I just like kept putting it off. So I finally got around to doing that and it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It took me like an hour to unpick everything and get them like all lined up again. And I still like match the pattern on the front. Feel pretty good about that. And then like while I was at it, I decided to take a look at some of the other areas that like weren't really working. So I was getting like a ton of bluesing in the back where it just looked like, yeah, like it didn't fit. It was tight around my hips. So I ended up letting out the pleats that were in the back. Um, it's just by a centimeter. Uh, they're pretty shallow pleats, but it made such a big difference in the way that it fits me like along there. I also took the belt off because I, in theory, I should have loved the, like it has a tie belt and I have another Heidi dress with the same tie belt that I love. And this one, I don't know. I didn't love it. I like it so much more like with a plain, simple, like faux leather belt. I, yeah, I like it so much more. And then I even decided to like shorten it, which gosh, like really showed me how much difference like an inch can make because this dress feels so much more fun and free <laughs> just by taking it up an inch. So in total, I think I spent like three hours just kind of like messing with little things and tweaking the fit a little bit. I also shortened the straps which again really helped with that like excess bluesing in the back. And yeah three hours later I like now have a dress that I'm gonna reach for all the time instead of like having it sit in a bin unworn all season. So totally worth it. Really glad that I did that. So this is the last thing I have to share with you today. It is my latest make and I think, well it's definitely my favorite thing that I made this summer, if not like all year. Uh, this is the Seamwork Wallace dress and romper. Um, so yeah, it like just looks like a little jersey skater dress, but the like fun secret is that there are shorts built in. I'm so excited about this. When it came out in May, I knew that like, oh, this is a thing that I need in my life. But I wasn't sure that I like, cause practically it checked all my boxes, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna like wearing something so form fitting. And it turns out like, I love it. It's so great. And even if I didn't, all the practical pieces of having built-in shorts is so amazing. So I definitely deal with thigh chafe in the summertime. I wear bike shorts under all my dresses and skirts. If I don't, it's very painful. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is that for biking, which is pretty essential when you live in the Netherlands, um, I have like a special bike because of my disability. I have a it's really a tricycle. It's not a, it's not a bike at all. It's a trike. Uh, so I have a, like a big three wheel bike and I sit really low to the ground and like extend my legs. It's not quite a recumbent bike, but like almost. That means I cannot get away with like wearing a dress or a skirt on the bike because it comes all the way up and like I would flash everyone. So I knew that like this situation with the shorts was gonna be a big win for me. And last week we went to the coast where we, um, we were gonna do a ton of biking. We went like all through the forest and the dunes. It was amazing. And I just knew that like I needed to <laughs> do that thing that we all do where like we rush and make something the night before we leave. And I'm so glad I did. <laughs> I was literally like at 11 p.m. still stitching this together, but it came together really quick and it's really quite fun to make. And I didn't make any adjustments. 
I will next time do like a little sloping shoulder. I didn't think I need to do a sloping shoulder adjustment on a sleeveless garment. I was wrong. So it is like a little loosey goosey through here. And I will, yeah, I don't think my bra is sticking out. I will raise the neckline a little bit. It does need to be pretty deep for you to like step into the whole thing, but I'd really like just like an inch because like here, if I have it pulled up all the way, that looks fine when I'm standing up. But when I sit down, it does feel like, well, it like pulls across the center of my bust and then, yeah, anyone can like see all the way down. So I think just bringing it up like an inch will help with that, but it will still give me like enough room to step in. But yeah, total game changer. I feel really cute. I feel like me because it's a dress, but it also like is so practical and definitely meets all of my like, yeah, like practical and sensory needs. So I can't wait to make more of these. So that is everything I've been making. It's actually not everything. There's everything outside of my like pretty neat project plans. But I thought I would share one because it has been a while <laughs> since I have made a video. So thought it would be fun to share. But also just to show that like not everything is like curated and nice little plans and nice little makes. Like sometimes you end up with things that you hate <laughs> and that's part of the process too. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy making. Bye.